Hi, gang, and welcome to another episode of OpenNMS 101. Uh, we're getting toward the end of the class here, and this has got to be my favorite lesson. While it focuses on the passive status keeper, it also includes things like the event translator. And in this lesson, we really tie together a lot of the concepts that we've been discussing throughout this class. So if you haven't seen the other um, modules, you may get a little lost in this one. Uh, I assume you have, and if you have, then um, you're ready to go. So the passive status keeper, what is it? Well, we were approached many years ago by a uh, company that, that did telev television uh, uh, transmission in Australia. So a big television company in Australia, and of course they used a lot of satellites. Now, the problem was satellites don't necessarily have IP addresses. They're not, you're not able to get information out of them. So our normal method of service assurance, the active polar, where we actually go out and, and, and test something on the network, failed in this scenario. But they did have this box. It was, it was manufactured by a company called Pixel Metrics. And Pixel Metrics would send events uh, to a management station like OpenNMS. It could send events into OpenNMS that would uh, relate to the status of the satellite dishes. So let's say a transceiver was down or some part of the system was down. Uh, it could send a trap when that part of the system was fixed. It would send another trap. And the idea was, could we map the OpenNMS model of having like a node and an interface and a service to something that wasn't this active service that we, we actually went out and monitored directly. And so we created this thing called the Passive Status Keeper. It's a way of tracking status uh, for something that we can't actively poll, and then that status is changed with an event. So basically the way it works is, is, is quite simple. There's a table in memory. And on that table, there is a node and interface and service, just like we have now, and whether it's up or down. So there's only those four things um, in the table, uh, one per each entry. Now, when OpenNMS starts up, it goes through its configuration in the database and says, oh, these nodes, these interfaces have these passive services. So it adds this to this table in memory, and it sets the status, of course, to up. And then it looks in the outage table. It says, do any of these passive services have an active outage? If so, the outage, the status of those services is marked to down. And that's pretty much it. Now we have this event that basically will come in and we can uh, set this event to change the status of any one of these particular services. But the actual service check, the monitor is, is quite simple. It just goes to memory and says, hey, is there a, uh, you know, what's the status of the service? If it's down, it generates all the node loss service events and things that we're used to. If it's up, nothing happens. Make sense? Now, how do we change this by events? Well, there's another really cool feature in OpenNMS called the Event Translator. And what the Event Translator does is it takes one event and it converts it into another event. Um, there's a lot of uses for this, uh, and, and, and some of this is event enrichment. We have a number of customers who will add their own database tables to the OpenNMS database, and basically they might have, um, you know, which customers are affected by a particular service running on a, on a, a node. And so if that service goes down, if it's an interface on a router, if it's a web server, etc., uh, when the node loss service event comes in, the event translator can take that translate that into an enhanced event in which in say the operator instruction field or one of the other fields of the event you can put hey this is the impact here are the customers that are impacted by this so it's really really kind of cool now you can change the whole event or you can inherit a bunch of stuff from the original event um, you have to change the unique event identifier the uei otherwise you don't want to have a loop otherwise it'll send it back in and come back in I'm not even sure if it'll actually run if you have the uh, UEI of the triggering event to be the same as the translated event. So for the passive status keeper, the PSK, we actually take an event and, and create, we turn it into a passive service status event. And we're going to show you how to do that. Now I'm going to jump back over here to um, my, my terminal window. Uh, and I'm going to edit the translator configuration.xml file. 
So the translator configuration.xml file, we ship a number of translations with OpenNMS. One of the most useful ones is SNMP link down event. Now, we talked about SNMP in earlier uh, lessons, and there's a very, very standard, very common event called link down. Basically, if you go to a device, you pull a cord out, if the link light goes from on to off, that usually will generate a link down message. Now, in the generic trap, in the trap that, that is specified by the SNMP standard, there's only one variable sent with that trap, and that is the index. And so the, how useful is that? You know, you'll get, a, you'll get a message that goes, oh no, index seven is down. No, not index seven. So the idea is, can we enrich these and make them more useful? And the, the, the fact of the matter is, yes. Basically, in the database, we have a number of um, uh, information for a particular IP address and an interface, an, uh, an S, uh, IF index. And those things include the uh, interface description, the interface name, and the interface alias, all which we have gathered and put in the database via SNMP. So let's look at this translation here. So the triggering event is this UEI right here. Let me get rid of that highlight. So we have this event right here, uei.openms.org slash generic slash traps SNMP link down. So when that event happens, it's going to trigger this event translation. And so the first thing we do is we set the UEI of our new event to pretty much the same thing, except instead of saying generic traps, like it says here, we put translator traps. And if you remember, the unique event identifier is a string that uniquely identifies a particular event. So by changing this from generic to translator, we are able to actually, um, we'll generate a new, a totally new event. Now notice this assignment name, this is just a field. So basically we're gonna uh, take a field in the original event and we are going to um, cha change it by setting it to a constant, which is just this string. So we, we hard code this string into the UEI field. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add three parameters. Now as you remember, events can have parameters. And so we're gonna add three new parameters. We're gonna call one of them um, the interface description, one of them the interface name, and one of them the interface alias. Now, to get these informations, we actually have to run an SQL statement. And so here's the SQL statement we want to do. We're going to say select the SNMP interface description from the SNMP interface table where the node ID equals question mark and the SNMP IF index equals question mark. Now these little colon colon integers, they're just required for the, uh, the, the link we have to the database. But um, the big thing is to notice these question marks. What these say is we need to fill these in with certain variables. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pass into this SQL statement, a very, the first variable, which is going to be the node ID field that came with the original event. So the SNMP link down event comes in. We're going to set this first question mark here to be whatever comes back from, this is matches, this is a regular expression, and we're going to set the result to be what the whole thing, whatever comes back from the node ID field. So now our, let's say this was node 17. So this would say select SNMP, from SNMP, SNMP IF Desker, from SNMP Interface, where SNMP node ID equals 7, team, 17. Now, the next thing we have to get is the index. Now, it turns out the index comes from a parameter sent from the first uh, event. So we have a link down event that comes from this, it sends this parameter. And of course, we have to do all these weird escapes. In default SNMP, the parameters are named uh, by the object ID. So in, when we create this parameter here, we're going to call it ifdesker. But what's going to happen is that for the original event, because it was an SNMP trap, the variable that gets sent, the var bind, is actually going to have an object ID, and it's going to start out .1.3.6.1.2.1.2.1.1.2.1.something. So .1.3.6.1, that's internet, so that's org, um, uh, ISO org, Department of Defense, internet. Two is management, one is MIP2, two is the interface table, two is the uh, two is interface branch, two is interface table, IF entry, first entry is IF 
uh, index, and then the IF index is going to be whatever comes after here. Now, I hope that you guys have some experience with regular expressions. If not, feel free to use some of our examples of the template. But basically, these little question marks there, uh, excuse me, parentheses, are groupings. So basically, what this says is starting with, so this regular expression is the tilde character. Caret says starting with. Find the parameter that starts with the 1.3.6.2.1.2.2.1.1 dot and then collect anything after that. And then this dollar sign says the end. So you're looking for the end of the parameter name. So anywhere from this dot, after this dot to the end, we're going to collect that number, which happens to be the if index. And so we'll plug that. So let's say if it's if index 1. So now our statement would read, select the uh, SNMP interface description from the SNMP interface table where node ID equals 17 and the SNMP IF index equals 1. And so that'll return, if it exists, it'll return the description. And then we repeat that for the name and we repeat that for the alias. So basically what we end up doing here is we end up adding three fields three parameters to our event, and then we send the translator event into OpenNMS. Now let me look at this, let me grab this UEI for a second. If you remember, all the events are defined in an event file, and I'm, if I edit the default events, I'm going to search for this guy. Ah, it's not going to let me do it. Do, 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 I don't want to escape. So there is the generic link down right here. And you can see we set do, 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 event label log message. Notice we set this to do not persist. So what do not persist does is this will not store this original link down event anywhere. So it won't be stored in the database. Instead, we'll deal with the translated event. So we'll never see the, the original link down event. We'll only see the translated event. So if you're using the event translator, you pretty much want to either hide either via do not persist or via um, setting this to log only, you want to kind of hide the event um, so that it's not shown to, to the end user. So the end user can focus on the translator event, which will have all the interesting and useful information. Does that make sense? Um, so if we look, let me go back up a directory, go back into the translator. Go back into the translator, so you can see we, we have one for SNP link down. We have a topology link down event, which is very, very similar. Um, we have a link up event. We have one for Hyperic. We have a Cisco configuration management. Again, all of these things, we just kind of look up and add various and different things to these events to make them more useful. Now, what we are going to end up doing is for the uh, passive status keeper, we're going to end up... Um, doing uh, adding an event translation and I just want to stress that um, the event translator could you know it stands on its own too you can use it you don't have to use the passive status keeper and the event uh, uh, to use the event translator the event translator as you saw with the link down event you can enrich events and this is huge there, there's there's a number of expensive commercial products that measure impact and basically, uh, depending on how much information you have about your network and how instrumented it is, you can actually use this event translator to provide very detailed information to your network operators. Okay, so how do we deal with um, the how do we deal with the PSK? We're going to create a new for this exercise. We're going to create a new uh, service called Class Mood. Now, if you remember, when we talked about SNMP traps, we created a, a, a class as moody and a class as joyful trap. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use those traps to trigger this passive class mood service. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a class mood. And in the last lesson, I talked about adding services to a particular node. In this case, we're going to do it ad hoc. We're not going to create a detector that detects class mood. That'd be actually very, very difficult if you think about it because you'd have to have some way to, 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 to know that a passive service needs to have, uh, that, a, that a passive service needs to exist on this particular interface. And to me, that's, you know, if, if it's passive, that, that can be difficult. I can think of a few ways to do it, but I think it's kind of difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to create class, this, we're going to add this class mood service to our local host node. We'll synchronize the requisition. 
Um, and then we'll notice that we'll look at the monitoring status. I'll give you a big spoiler. It's going to say not monitored because we haven't added it to any kind of polling package. So then we want to add this uh, passive status keeper monitor to our, our default polling package. We're going to update the event translator to take our traps, our um, moody and joyful traps, and turn them into passive status events. Then, because we monitored the, modified the polling package, we're going to have to restart open NMS. So we'll create an outage, and we'll um, see what happens, and then we'll restore the outage. Make sense? If not, hit rewind or hold on for a few seconds, and we'll get through this exercise. Okay, so I'm going to jump back over here to my GUI. So here is my GUI. Let me enlarge that so it takes up the whole screen. So here we are. There's no outages. There's no alarms. Everything is nice and green, so that's kind of cool. So I'm going to go over to Configure Open NMS, Managing Provisioning Requisitions, and I'm going to edit our class requisition by clicking on the little pencil, and then I'm going to edit my local host node, and then we have these interfaces. We have this 127.0.0.1. I'm going to edit that guy, and I'm going to add a service. Now notice it says... Um, Service name, choose one from this drop-down list or type in custom text for a new one. So I'm just going to type in class mood. Now I know I've stressed this a number of times, but repetition is basic to all learning, so I'll repeat it. Cla um, the service name you choose here is important because it's going to percolate throughout uh, everything. Um, and so don't use spaces. In this case, I used a dash. I could use an underscore character, or a friend of mine used to say under bar. I'm going to use an underscore character or um, camel case. Uh, those are uh, the, the best ways to do it. Uh, so I'm going to just, I've done this. I've just manually added the service. I'm going to hit save. Once this service is added to a node, it will be available on a dropdown box. So if you say, want to put this class mood service on a number of devices, can't imagine why, but if you did, you could go and choose it from a drop-down once it is associated with a particular node. So I'm going to save this, hit return, and now I'm back here. I will return again. I notice that my requisition is red because I've made changes, and I'm going to hit synchronize. I'll hit yes. So basically, we just synchronized. Everything goes white, which says all changes have been applied, and I'm going to go to my node page. And as you can see, on the 127.0.1 interface, we now have this class mood service. And as promised, it says not monitored. Make sense? Okay, so let's get back to the slides. So we've added the class mood service. It's not monitored. So we're going to create this, this monitor service in the Polar configuration. It's one line. Remember how, especially with the, the last lesson when we did the, uh, the paid sequence monitor, it was a huge amount of XML. Here this just says service name, class mood, the uh, interval to check is 30,000 milliseconds or 30 seconds, user find equals true. Remember that's not really important, but I try to use it anyway. And then status equals on. That's it. And that's why we have this little slash uh, greater than sign because there's nothing else there. Um, if there was any service that you wanted to monitor at a millisecond rate, this would probably probably be it because all it's doing is checking memory. So it's very, very fast. Um, I just set it to 30. There's no reason to set it much faster than that. And plus, it'll allow me to demonstrate some of the up and down things we're going to create. Now, remember, when you actually do this, you actually have to define what software, basically what class, um, the service runs. Now, I made a mistake here. This is service mood. It should say class dash mood, and it does say class dash mood in the uh, in the screen, but I'll have to update these slides before I publish them. So, um, yeah, this should say class dash mood because, again, it counts. If I just left this as it is here, it wouldn't match. So I'll fix it um, uh, in the slide when I upload these to the to the website. But notice it uses the passive service monitor. That is the name of the monitor. That is the passive status keeper. Okay. Now, here is our... Now, we, we've added the service. And again, all the service check does is look at that table in memory and go, is it up, is it down? Is it up, is it down? Boom, 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 boom. Now, in order to make it go up and make it go down, we have to generate a passive service status event. And to do that, we're going to use the event translator. Now, for simplicity, for simplicity, I've made this fairly simple. 
all we've basically done is use constants. Now, in reality, if you were using this on multiple systems, you would have to have some way of like looking up what the particular um, what the particular host name and um, IP address, etc. In the case of this uh, television provider in Australia, what we did is we created virtual nodes. We basically provisioned a node that was like satellite one, satellite two, satellite three, satellite four, etc. And then we um, added satellite one was 10.1.1.1, satellite two was 10.1.1.2, etc. We just made up IP addresses. And then we could look those up in the database when these events came in. But rather than complicate this, I kind of wanted just to put this in here as, um, as, as simply as possible. So we're going to take the um, uei.openms.org class moody event. That's going to trigger this. And then what we're going to end up doing is we're going to set the, there's the passive, the passive status, service status event requires three or four parameters. Four, nobody expects the special. Four parameters. So we've got the passive node label, the passive IP address, the passive service name, and what is the status? Is it up or down? Remember, these four things correspond directly to the table that's in memory. There's a, a node label or host ID, passive service IP address, the name, and the status. So what we're going to do is say when the Moody event, when the Moody trap comes in, it'll get converted into an event. The Moody event will trigger this translation and will set the node label parameter to be hard coded, constant, localhost, hard coded 127.0.0.1, hard coded service class mood, and a hard coded status down. This is our down event. Now we will add a reason. So there is a fifth parameter you can add to the passive service, service status. It's optional. These four you got to have. But the passive reason code, we're actually going to dig up from the trap. If you remember when we did the trap, I would send it in and we had a, we'd add an, a var bind. And this was this .1.3.6.1.4.1.9999 because I just know it doesn't exist. And the var bind would actually be something like they're bored or if it's an up event, they got pizza, etc. So what this will say is go to this original Moody event, which came from the Moody trap, take this var bind if it exists, and set that as a passive reason code. And then finally, remember, you always have to change the UEI of the, um, the triggering event. So we're going to set that to be our service passive server status event. This is the UEI for the passive service status event that changes the service from up to down. Make sense? Okay. The next section is the up event. This is our joyful trap. So the joyful trap will come in and get converted into this event. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll set the, the node label. Uh, IP address, etc. Notice I left off. Here I have this reason code. I left it off. I mean, you could put it in there. There's no real reason, but no one really cares about ups. <laughs> no one really, I mean, if you do, fine, but usually up means everything's okay. I don't care. I want to know why it's down, so I left it off. So we again, we hard code localhost 127.0.0.1, the class moon service. Again, remember that that's important. Um, and then we have the status equals up. And then again, we set the event to be the passive status passive service status event. Make sense? Okay. So now we're going to update the configuration files. Again, I suggest you don't type these in. Uh, you can cut and paste them from my uh, my screenshots. But what I like to do is go to the training, which is again www.openms.org/slash capital T training. And then we've got our configuration, our slides, and our videos. I'm going to hit on config. And it's not there because I forgot to add it. Okay, let's add it because I screwed up. Okay, I usually don't do this, but I don't like editing things. So uh, here it is, live, coming at you. Whoops, I better do it as me. So sure sound, do, 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 www.openms.org. And we'll go stick that into training, stick that into config, sudo. Directory exercise 10, CD exercise 10. I did actually copy it up there, I just forgot to move it. So let's move to move tilde polar configuration here. And the translator configuration here. Okay, let's get out of there and get out of there. Okay, going back to our screen, I'll hit refresh and magically we now have an exercise 10 directory. 
and there's the polar configuration and translator configuration. Now, if you look at the polar configuration file, again, don't cut and paste from here because it adds all these little dashes, and those little dashes are a pain in the butt. Just look at the source if you want to do that. And there is our class mood service. Remember, again, it's only one line, and remember we have the class mood tag at the bottom to tell OpenMS what class or what piece of software to use for this particular thing. So what I want to do is just right mouse click, copy link location, go back to my system, CD opt OpenMS Etsy, we're already there, wget dash capital N, which will not clobber, which was will clobber the, um, polar the existing polar configuration file. And then we'll do the same for the translator configuration. So I'll go over here, wget dash capital N, paste that in. And now I'm going to stop OpenMS. If you guys were with me when the, on the last lesson, um, for some reason our script and system control doesn't is not happy with restart. And so what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to use the, the script itself, which is an opt open and spin, and I'm going to stop OpenMS. And then uh, once this is, comes back up, I'm going to start it. Again, the only reason we need to do this is the fact that we changed the polar. Uh, when we did the original polar exercise, we were trying to move to the point where you do not have to restart all of OpenMS when a configuration change is made. But we're not quite there yet. So um, while we wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and look at the translator configuration file that we have here. And as you see, here is our passive status events. So again, we're taking this here Moody event, which is the trap. We're going to assign these four parameters, add an optional fifth parameter for the code, set the UEI as a passive service status. For the up event, we just repeat that. We leave off the reason code, and instead we still have to set these four things. You have to have a node label, passive IP address, passive service name, and passive status. Now we thought about adding, um, putting node IDs in here. Um, but we didn't because most people will probably know, uh, even if they get a trap, they can pass something that can serve as a node label. In the case of the satellite, perhaps there's some field in the trap that comes from the pixel metrics box that uh, is useful as a node label. So we put that there so you didn't have to look up the, uh, the node ID. But the passive uh, status keeper will actually do that and store that in the, uh, in the database. And so uh, we've got that. So going back to our slides, just to repeat again, um, our goal was to uh, use the passive status keeper to use events to uh, trigger a service change. So we added our class mood service to our existing 127.0.0.1 interface on our local host node. We synchronized the re requisition. And then we found out that the monitoring status was not monitored because, of course, we didn't put it into the monitoring configuration. So we added it, single line. Again, there's nothing really there outside of is it up or is it down. And then we added the monitor line to the bottom. Now, the, the, the heart of this is the event translator. So we had to take our event. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be a trap. It could be a syslog message. It could be an internal open and a mess event. Um, but in this case, we, we, we had our trap that we configured in the trap lesson, and we converted that to an event. We set all of the, the passive node label, IP address, service name, and status. In the case of the Moody event to be down, we added the reason code. We did joyful as the up event. Again, node label, IP address, service name, and status of up. And then we updated our configuration, and we restarted OpenNMS. So again, system control restart open a mess. It obviously worked at some point in time. It didn't work now. Uh, so I do start and stop manually. Now again, if you uh, we should be up by now. So let me go back to my um, system here. And we are. Yay, we are up. Now if I go to my node, we should see the class mood is now monitored. It says 100%. So we actually have the class mood service here. And it is 100% because it's up. Now let's cause an outage. So I'm going to go through my history and look for send trap. So here we go. Here is a trap that we sent way back in one of the earlier lessons. 
and um, let's say I forgot. Let's see. Uh, let's just use they be bored. They be bored. So that's our lesson. So again, we're using a trap. We're using sending this as a version one trap using a community name of public. Remember, OpenMS ignores community names, so we don't need to care about that. We're sending it to 127.0.0.1, and we're going to send the, um, the the ID of the trap, which we just made up, is this 99999.2. Note this is very, very important because we want, uh, this has to match. Localhost is the uh, source of the trap. Generic type of one, specific type of six. This is a blank placeholder. And then we added this variable binding. That is our reason. And I'll send that in there like that. Now, within 30 seconds, we should actually get the event. Well, there we go. And so here we go. We got the event. This is the event that came in. OpenMS class is moody. They be bored. So that's the event. And then this is the passive status event. So since we didn't go and change this one to be do not persist or log only, we see it in the GUI. And this was the passive status event that came in. Now at the moment, nothing has happened, but by the time I hit refresh, we have an outage. So the class mood status, we have an outage, and there's the reason code, they be bored. And that's what we sent in. Isn't that cool? I just want to stress, this is what I love about this lesson. We have an alarm that the node loss service. We have an outage that the node loss service. We have notifications. Look, we have notices. If I click on the notice, we have this class mood service. So we used an event and we were able just by sending in a particular event, we were able to monitor this thing as if it was a service. Think of what you've accomplished. This is kind of cool. We created our own custom event and then we used a trap to translate that trap into that custom event. Then we took that event and we translated it into a passive a service status event and then we changed the status of the service. I love this exercise because now everything's triggering. You've got escalations are running. You could open trouble tickets. It's just awesome. Anyway, well, let's fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and send this trap in because this is the up event. Notice um, it's very, very similar, except that it, it sends in, uh, it has a specific value of two. We had decided that a specific value of one is a down, specific value of two is an up. Notice there's mail, that's all of the ups and downs, those are the notifications that we're getting, so that's kind of cool. Now if I go back here and refresh this, notice the notification is automatically cleared because we got the up event, there's no more outages, there's still an alarm because if I look at the alarms, um, this hasn't uh, kicked in yet. Notice by the time I refresh this, this class mood should actually get cleared because of our generic clear. So our generic clear, every 30 seconds it's running and it matches ups with downs. And so it'll clear that event. And within five minutes, all of these existing events will disappear. And so that's kind of cool. So think about it. You started out with doing silly things like creating a user and putting in a password. I won't say they're silly, but rather simple things. And I know some of some of you are watching this kind of rolling your eyes. Okay, events, that's kind of straightforward, etc. But by taking all of these different pieces and putting them together, you can create some really cool things. Think about it. If you have a um, uh, if you have a printer and you want to monitor toner. You can get toner, uh, if that printer sends traps, when toner is low and when toner has been refilled, you can create a toner service. Um, if we wanted to, I, I monitor a drink machine with OpenNMS. We could go and use that to actually um, monitor. I could have, is the drink machine okay? And I could have that service. Anything on your network that you can get events for, that you can either create with our sendevent.pl script or something similar, or comes from traps or comes from syslogs, you can use to really um, enrich the information you can provide to your operators and the way you monitor your network. I just think that's cool. Anyway, so again, outages. When we create an outage, we get the outage, we get the outage reason, we get a uh, notice, we get an alarm. And then when we fix it, everything comes back up, we get again the events, the outage, and the alarm. And that's it. So that is it for this lesson. 
Uh, I hope you folks have found it useful. We have two more lessons left in the class, so if you've been hanging uh, hanging around for so long, I appreciate it. I hope you find these things useful. Uh, the next two lessons, we're going to talk about data collection, and we're going to talk about thresholding. Now, um, the fun doesn't stop there. I have big plans for a number of other lessons, but in order to do those, they're, they're going to be much more fun for me because they'll just be one-offs. If you when you if you get through all twelve of these lessons, you will have a solid basic working knowledge of OpenNMS, uh, and I hope it isn't as scary uh, as, as it can seem. Just trying to find your way through the documentation and uh, and the wiki, um, and then you can build on that with the other exercises that we've got going. Anyway, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, please leave us feedback in the comments, and until next time, take care.